Our number one story tonight, it just might be the fear of what happens in the next two decades that has fueled Republican energy in this election cycle because the future of the Republican Party, maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, but soon and for the rest of its life, is a grim one. Two days ago on his radio program, Glenn Beck suggested otherwise, claiming that his fans represent this nation's political future. We have 30 million people in our footprint. 30 million people. Well, that's 10% of the population. A lot of people say, well, that's only 10%. That's 10% of the population. Here's the good news. This 10% is going to be the shelter for the other 90%. This 10% is going, out of this 10% will be the leaders of tomorrow. So who are these leaders of tomorrow? This alleged 30 million who buy whatever Beck is selling? You're looking at them. This is his audience at his Washington rally on September 11th. They are white people. They are Christian people. They are old people. Which means not only will the leaders of tomorrow die tomorrow-ish, they're not even replacing themselves in the population. Beck's 10% is shrinking. Out of every thousand white women, 60 had a baby in 2006, compared to 70 babies for every thousand black women, and compared to, for every thousand Hispanic women, 102 babies. As of 2006 birth rates, white Americans were falling just short of replacing themselves in the population. Hispanics were not only replacing themselves, they were tossing in .96 of another one for good measure. The implications for the white Christian male power structure is obvious, or at least they were back in 2007, for one member of the white Christian male power structure named Bill O'Reilly, who feared for the future of that structure if the far left had its way. He was urging Senator John McCain not to let more immigrants into this country. They want to break down the white Christian male power structure, of which you're a part, and so am I, and they want to bring in millions of foreign nationals to basically break down the structure that we have. In that regard, Pat Buchanan is right. So I say that you've got to cap it. Let's bring in a non-member of the white Christian male power structure, Arshad Hassan, executive director of the group Howard Dean, founded Democracy for America. Thanks for your time tonight, sir. My pleasure. Uh, correcting my videotape, that's uh, Bush's rally, or uh, Beck's rally from 828, not the one from 911. Uh, on the numbers, who's, who is right here? Is the future Glenn Beck's audience or Bill O'Reilly's worst fears? Well, you laid it out, Keith. I mean, any seventh grader can do this math, and clearly Glenn Beck hasn't been able to. Mm -hmm. This is a nation that's becoming increasingly diverse and increasingly pluralistic. And if we want to really build a movement, and I think, you know, Glenn Beck has been really trying to do that, I guess. If you want to build a movement, you have to be able to build a broad, progressive movement that is broad-based. I mean, if you want to do the math, if you're, Glenn Beck really wants to do the math, we already have a successful model. Barack Obama won with enormous portion, enormous share of the vote. And that was a coalition built of young people, minorities, uh, people of broad interests all over this country. How much of the enthusiasm thus that we see from the right, particularly in the last few months, how much of that actually is coming out of fears about what it means for them, means for, uh, for them to join everybody else basically in being a, a, a minority in this country, fears about the death of, of whatever values and culture that they think are unique to them? I think it's ludicrous to fear being a minority in this country. Um, I'm not really afraid of being a minority. I'm, I'm already one. Mm -hmm. So I, I think if he really wants to reach out, I, I, he should think about, or he and whoever else in the Tea Party, should really think about what the main concerns are in this country. People want an economy that works for everyone. And that's, a, that's an issue that is both broad-based and really appeals to that progressive base of uh, young people and, and minorities. But does it boil down to something as simple as when, they, when, when we see people hysterically saying, we want our country back, it's it's basically a white country that's nice to uh, acceptable minorities. Well, they've created their own mythology about what this yeah. country used to be. So <laughs> I, I don't find any of that even relevant. The Republican Party, of course, uh, gave us the Southern strategy in the 70s, mm -hmm. uh, uh, picking out racism against black people. And Ken Melman mm -hmm. has just admitted, admitted the use of homophobia in the first decade of this mm -hmm. century. And we've seen the same tactics used much more recently against Latinos and Muslims especially. Yeah. Wasn't there going to be a Republican big tent at one point, or have we just sort of forgotten that one? 
Yeah, clearly that didn't work. And I don't think there was really any sincerity behind a supposed Big Ten. I mean, if there was a Big Ten, remember, there was actually an effort in the 90s to reach out to Muslims uh, in the Republican Party. That mm. clearly didn't work. Uh, and then this decade, we've, ha we've had briefly an attempt in the Bush administration to reach out to Latinos in this country. The minute that these Tea Party people who are clearly taking over the country, the minute that they have an opportunity to throw anyone else under the bus, they will. And that's not a big tent. Isn't the rights quandary then that if you modernize conservatism, it, it, you basically kill it? You know what? I think it's a bit too late for them to really think about it. It's almost over intellectualizing it. You've got Glenn Beck and you've got Rush Limbaugh going out there saying this, we're the future. This is it. We're the future. When demographically that is false. And honestly, if you're building a pluralistic society, that's you know, not where this country is headed. Executive Director of Democracy for America, Arshad Hassan, thank you kindly for your time. Thank you. That's